friends. Welcome to worship at St. John's Lutheran Church in Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Today is January the 10th, 2021, and it is the day in the church when we celebrate Jesus' baptism, the festival of the baptism of our Lord. We are glad that you are here for worship with us this day, or whatever day it is that you are joining us online. Before we begin our worship this morning, we as a community of faith need to pause to remember and to give thanks for the lives of two of the saints of St. John's who passed on to their eternal reward this week. So please let us take a moment of silence. Please join me in remembering Hilda H. and Anne Marie K. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. Let us worship God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. 
mark's gospel begins with jesus baptism unlike matthew's gospel which begins with jesus genealogy and then tells the story of his birth from joseph's perspective unlike the gospel of luke which begins with the much more popular and familiar and detailed account of the Christmas story. And unlike the Gospel of John, which you may recall from last week, begins with a mystical poem describing Jesus being co-eternal with God. Unlike the other three Gospels, Mark begins with Jesus' baptism. Did Mark not know the Christmas story? It's possible. His was the first gospel to be written. But perhaps it's more likely that Mark did know the Christmas story, but just didn't include it in his gospel because he didn't find it relevant to what he was setting out to do, which, as you just heard, was to set forth the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So we can only guess why Mark doesn't tell us about Jesus' birth, but we can safely assume that for Mark, this event was where Jesus' life truly began. When he came up out of the water, when he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit descending, and when we heard the voice from heaven. We're going to be spending a good bit of time in the Gospel of Mark this year, so I think it's worth our while to talk a little bit about the distinct character of the second Gospel, and I can do that in just four words. Mark doesn't mess around. Mark doesn't mess around. We've already seen that he omits some of the stories that the other Gospels include, like any kind of a Christmas story, making it the shortest of all the Gospels. He doesn't mess around. And the stories that Mark does tell, he tells in an urgent style, quick and to the point. His favorite word seems to be immediately which he uses more often in his short gospel than the other three gospels combined use that word. Mark doesn't mess around, not in his style and not in his story. Which, which is why I think it's so interesting that Mark includes a detail about Jesus' baptism that none of the other gospels do. While Matthew and Luke both describe the heavens being opened at Jesus' baptism, and by the way, John doesn't include that detail at all, while the other two Gospels mention that the heavens were opened, Mark, no messing around, get to the point, Mark is the only one to include this vivid detail of how the heavens were opened. Mark says they were torn apart, torn apart. Remember that in the ancient world, it was believed that the sky was a dome over our heads, a dome that separated heaven from earth, a barrier that separated God from God's people. And it would seem, as Mark tells the story in his quick and vivid style, it would seem that God was just not willing to tolerate that separation any longer. God is in such a rush to get to earth that God rips open the heavens to descend upon Jesus, the first human being, but certainly not the last, with whom God would become one. It would appear that God urgently needed to be with us. When I think about an urgent need, I think about things that are so important that they must be attended to immediately. 
one saturday a couple of months ago when we were doing our laundry tricia went down to the basement to transfer the wash over into the dryer only to find that when the washer was emptying the water it didn't drain it was backing up through the floor drain into the basement and let me just say and i know some of you uh, i've talked to recently can feel this pain it wasn't only water that was coming up through the drain and this unfortunately was not the first time that we had ever had this experience although we had thought we were finished with this problem when we had the entire sewer line replaced a few years ago but i i digress at any rate we knew what had to be done from experience we knew what had to be done and we were reluctant to call the plumber we knew that a service call would be even more costly since it was the weekend. But what choice did we have? We couldn't wait until a more convenient time to deal with the issue. It was an urgent need. And we were most grateful when the plumber responded nearly immediately to use Mark's favorite word, to our phone call. An urgent need. That's what God must have been experiencing to tear open the heavens. No messing around Mark makes that immediately clear. God could not wait to enter our world, could not wait to share our life, could not wait to enter into us first through our baptism, and then to renew that presence over and over again throughout our lives. And that is good news, especially in this moment of history when our need for God's presence is so obviously urgent. So we're going to take this opportunity, today's service, our remembrance of Jesus' baptism, we're going to take this opportunity to remember our own, our own baptism and our own persistent need for God's presence to be renewed in our lives. So as you see water being poured into the baptismal font, please pray with me. Merciful God, we thank you for tearing apart the heavens to enter our world, making us your own by the water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and continued to nourish us in the community of faith. Uphold us in the gifts and promises of baptism that our faith in you and the urgency of our love for others may match the urgency of your love for us. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And so I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. And though it may feel funny to speak these words aloud when you are in your homes, I invite you to do just that. Make these responses loud and proud and know that though we can't hear one another, your voices are joined by those of your sisters and brothers in faith. Do you renounce the devil? and all the forces that defy God. If so, please say aloud, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, please say aloud, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, please say aloud, I renounce them. I renounce them. Now, having renounced the ways opposed to God, I invite you to speak the words of faith that you see on your screen. 
Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the account of Jesus' baptism, you have heard God's urgent and passionate declaration of love for you. And by renouncing evil and reciting the Apostles' Creed, you have made public profession of your faith. Now, I ask you to renew your commitment to trying to live in response to God's love by the way that you practice your faith. And so I ask, will you, in the year 2021, will you worship the Lord our God? Will you study God's word? Will you strengthen your relationship with God and one another through prayer? Will you invite other people to experience God's love for them? Will you encourage your sisters and brothers in their life of faith? And will you give of your time, your energy, and your resources to serve God's people? If so, please say aloud, yes, with God's help. Yes, with God's help. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for loving us, for giving us new birth through water and the Holy Spirit and for renewing our faith. As once you tore open the heavens so that your spirit might descend upon your Son, so now once again break down the barriers between us and you and stir up your Holy Spirit within us. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
your prayers today and in the week to come. I ask and encourage you to remember the following people in your prayers. Please pray for those who have been hospitalized this week from our congregation. For Janet P., who had surgery on Monday. For Adrian M., for Steve H., and for Marianne H. Please remember in prayer those who have been in rehab but were expected to be discharged this week, Marge W. and Archie S. Please pray for others in our congregation who are in special times of need, the families of Hilda and Anne Marie, for Marge B. on hospice care, for Nancy M. and Bob R. Please remember others from our extended family for whom our prayer warriors have been praying this week from through our prayer chain. For Margie and Keith, who are recovering from COVID. For Marty P., the brother of Beth Stoner. Stoner and for Beth's daughter, Sarah, who's been diagnosed with COVID. Please continue to pray for all who have been diagnosed and who struggle with the effects of COVID and for an end to racism. Each prayer ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. Guided by Christ our light, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all people in need. Let us pray for the church through the world. Renew your church and its leaders by your Holy Spirit and ignite in all your children a passion for your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our planet. Renew the face of the earth and empower us to be good stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation. Renew in Americans a commitment to democracy and peace and unite us in our commitment to one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who give care to others. Renew the strength of medical personnel, essential workers, emergency workers, and all who by profession or life circumstances give of themselves to heal and help a hurting world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are in any kind of need. Renew the hope of all who are struggling and move us to share our time, energy, and resources to make a difference in the lives of all who have been laid low by the challenges of this life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are sick Renew the health of your people and sustain all with your mercy and peace. Hear our prayers for those who are on our minds and hearts this day, including the people whom we have named aloud in this service, those listed on our Facebook page, and those we name before you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I encourage you to share peace now with others in your household maybe even to stop the video and reach out by text or phone call to somebody else and to share peace with the world as we prepare in just a moment to receive our Lord through his Holy Supper.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, O God, for creating the sun, the moon, and the stars which give light to this beautiful planet. We thank you for the light of your presence, which glows through the pages and people in the Bible. And most of all, we bless you for your son, Jesus, who is the light of the world. We remember how, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. We remember, too, how after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Jesus' preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will shine with your light. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal, that strengthened through the bread of life, we too may leave this place glowing with your light and love. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For those of you who are watching this service at 9.30 on a Sunday morning and are planning to come to church to receive the sacrament, I invite you to turn off the video at this point and prepare to make your way to the church where the communion bread will be distributed until about 11 a.m. in the parking lot. Please enter the parking lot from Quarry Street. For those who are unable to come to receive the sacrament, I invite you now to feast on our Lord's body and blood with your eyes and in your heart joining me in praying this prayer aloud. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the altar. Although I cannot receive Holy Communion today, I pause to reflect on your great love demonstrated to us through this holy meal. And I give thanks for the knowledge that you are also present with me through your word. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace. Let me never be separated from you. May I live in you 
and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Last Sunday was the first Sunday in the month, but we are recognizing our baptismal birthdays for the month of January today, on the day that we all remember our baptisms and the day that we celebrate Jesus' own baptism. And so today I'm listing for you the members of our congregation whom we have on record as celebrating their baptismal anniversaries, their baptismal birthdays this month. So please remember them, especially in your prayers, maybe reach out to them and tell them that you are thinking of them as beloved sisters and brothers in Christ. And then after I read the list, we will sing our baptismal song for them. These are the folks that we are celebrating with today. Jessica Andres, Amanda Berniker, McKenna Breezewine, Shirley Connor, Sarah Fainel, Alex Gicking, Connie Gower, Shirley Grishot, Liz Holland, Calvin, Natalie, and Weston McAndrew, Brenda Merkel, Eileen, Erica, and Nicole Rape, Merrick Sawicki, Carol Schlotman, Harper and Kennedy Schuster, Lana Snyder, and Stephen Strella III. So would you please join me as we sing and pray for these sisters and brothers in Christ. because we are all beloved children of God, made so by our baptism into Jesus Christ. Receive these words of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share Christ's life. Thanks be to God.